Hello, my name is Kenny Cook. I'm here to tell you about my book that I wrote, A Country Boy's Life, and how God's love brought me home, and it is available on Amazon. My book is about my life growing up on a farm here and dealing with a suicide when I was 15 years old, and I believe what I became after that, and I lived with that for 32 years, and what I had to do to find my way back to God and how I am now after finding my way back to Him. Uh, the, the friend that had committed suicide was a lifelong friend of mine. I knew him since I was a little baby. He had a farm just down the road from us. So he was in the same type of business that we were in. So whenever we needed help, on our farm, he would help us, and vice versa. He had two older daughters that were my sister's age, and I knew them since birth as well, so they grew up to be like sisters to me. Growing up, uh, I was a very happy person. Uh, the more people I was around, the better. And when I got the call that morning that he had committed suicide, it, it changed my life forever and not for the better. I can still remember the phone call that morning and it was some 40 years ago. Uh, within an hour after that phone call, I don't remember anything for about an entire year for whatever reason. I turned into this extremely hateful and angry person without even realizing it at first. And when I would realize it and know about it, I hated it because that's not who I was. That's not how I was raised and how I was brought up. But there didn't seem to be anything I could do about it because when I would try and stop being like that, I would hear a voice inside saying, uh, no, don't stop. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. It's right. It makes you feel good. I turned into this person where I would bring everybody down around me as much as I could all the time. I didn't care what I said to them. The worse I said to them, the better I felt. And I hated that. And I started blaming people for everything. I started blaming God for the actual suicide and everything that came after it because there were a lot of things that happened after the suicide because of the suicide. And I wanted to stop in the worst way, but I just didn't know how and I couldn't. I started writing in 2017 on my book and it was very easy for me because everything that I wrote in the book was actual experiences that I lived and went through. And it was very easy to write and it was very therapeutic and it didn't take me long at all. Because once I started, I had everything in my mind and what I wanted to write and what I needed to say. I decided to write this book because I believe for only one reason, God wanted me to do it. Because once I started, it only took me a couple months to write the entire thing. And everything flowed so easy because it was all experiences that I lived through. And before I knew it, I had the whole thing done. Like I said, I, I lived with a hateful attitude towards myself and towards everybody that I would meet. And I would be meeting so many people throughout these years. And I never knew exactly why. I learned later on that it was because God was sending me people to help me and I never realized that. I was never able to put two and two together. I don't know if it's because I just was so blinded by hate and anger or I didn't want to stop being like I was. But people would always be telling me later on in my life that I should write a book, I should write this stuff down. And finally, after so many people saying that, I just gave in and started. And once I started, it was a snowball effect. And before I knew it, I had a book written.
but it was a very long and hard process to get to that. It was 30 plus years. Uh, people say that's a long time, but I think now in the scope of things, 30 years it wasn't that long because I don't remember hardly any of it. My so-called healing process, as people would like to call it, actually began in 2005 when I would get married, of all things. It was something that I never thought would happen. I never wanted it to happen. But before I knew it, I was married. My wife had a daughter from a previous marriage. She was five years old, and we decided that we wanted to take her to church and raise her right. I never would have imagined how hard it would be for me to go back to church because I was a churchgoer before the suicide. And for seven or eight years of going back to church was extremely hard for me. I just did not want to be in church. I didn't want to go to church every week. I couldn't stand listening to the minister's sermons. I didn't want to talk to any of the parishioners there. I couldn't even tell my own wife that I did not want to go to church. And I never knew why. If you can imagine doing something for seven, eight years or more every week and absolutely hating it and not knowing how to stop that feeling, what to do about it. I couldn't say anything to anybody that I wasn't going to go back to church anymore. But I realize now that I had to go back to church to start my healing process. And that was the only way that it was going to begin. I finally gave in on a Sunday morning of all days when I decided I had to talk to my minister about the suicide because for 30 years, I couldn't get that out of my mind. And I finally talked to him one day about the suicide, but when I went into that meeting, I didn't talk to him about the suicide at all. I talked to him about what I had said directly to God one morning, about 15 years prior to this, when I cursed God directly. I said the most awful things to him. And when I came out of that meeting, I felt completely different because I went into this meeting with one purpose in mind. I kept thinking over, I wanted to talk to him about the suicide and why. But I didn't talk to him at all about that. I talked to him about when I cursed God and if I could be forgiven for that morning. And he said, yes, and you have to pray for it and mean it in your heart. And another thing I didn't understand was when he said, you have to mean it in your heart. I thought, how could it be any different than an actual prayer? I didn't have no clue what he was talking about. But we said the prayer there and immediately I felt different. The best way I can describe it is imagine living in a cold, dark, damp, moldy cave with absolutely no sunlight. That's how it felt for me for 30 years. And then after I talked to my minister that morning, I felt like I was out in a field of brightly colored flowers in bright, warm sunshine. And I thought that it's finally all over. And that was the beginning of my healing process because I was asked for forgiveness for God. I just recently had finished my second book, believe it or not, which is something I thought I would never do in a million years, let alone write a first one. I had to go through a lot more stuff after I talked to my minister, some things that I never thought that I would do or say. And I also had to go through a divorce after I wrote my first book, and everything combined led me to where I am today. And I do not have a release date for this second book. That is going to be, I think, a while. It's been a long, drawn-out process for this one because there's quite a bit more stuff that I had to go through in this first one, like if the stuff in the first one wasn't long enough. The reception to my book, I think, has just been absolutely amazing. 
Maybe it's because I th never thought in a million years that I would be doing something like this. But I just want to help people now with my story and let them know that God is always there for you. I have been meeting a lot of people. If they don't actually purchase the book, they sit and they talk to me and I actually sit and listen to them to hear their stories about what they're going through or what they went through. And my only hope is that my book will help them in some way. I have gotten a tremendous amount of feedback from people saying, yeah, your story helped me. And that's all I want right now. That's my main, my, my main goal. Yeah, one, one phrase I like to say is that to be right with yourself, you have to be right with other people. And in order to be right with other people, you first have to be right with God. Thank you.